Welcome back everyone to Racing Reviews for your qualifying report here in Bahrain for the Formula 1 2020 Sakia Grand Prix. What a session that was nail-biting stuff all the way through, two rookies at the back of the field and of course George Russell getting that promotion to Mercedes, could he challenge for pole position? Red Bull closer than ever, a midfield closer than ever, an awesome session to start off this weekend. So as always, spoiler warning ahead, if you've not seen today's qualifying, I would highly, highly, highly recommend you go away and do that, watch the highlights, whatever, and then come back to watch the review afterwards. So as always, if you are new, feel free to subscribe. I hope you all enjoy today's review. Spoiler warning out of the way, this is your result from qualifying and sadly enough for all George Russell fans the stars didn't quite align as Valtteri Bottas claimed another pole position in 2020 but he was ran all the way to the checkered flag just 26 thousandths of a second separating Valtteri Bottas and George Russell just 56 thousandths of a second separating Bottas and third place man Max Verstappen. One of the closest qualifying sessions we have had for years. An awesome fight surely in the opening laps tomorrow. Charles Leclerc, an awful car that Ferrari has been in 2020. An inch perfect lap puts him on the second row of the grid. A brilliant drive from Charles Leclerc. Likewise with Sergio Perez with that old engine after that retirement at the end of last week. Weekend's Bahrain Grand Prix and Danny Kvyat in what could be his penultimate Formula 1 qualifying session, P6. I did not expect that one today. Daniel Ricciardo wasn't overly happy after that session, 5 tenths of pole position, but in front of both McLarens, in front of Team Esteban Ocon, I think Dan can be pretty happy with that one. Carlos Sainz, the lead McLaren in 8th, Pierre Gasly in ninth, disappointed to be out-qualified by teammate Danny Kvyat, and Lance Stroll rounded out your top 10. Esteban Ocon failed to get through to Q3 again in 2020. So close, just 54 thousandths of a second. This lap time being so, so short. The gaps, as you can see throughout the field today, so, so close. Alex Albon, a huge disappointment, failing to get through to Q3. We'll have to talk about that in a moment's time. Sebastian Vettel, also like Albon, really just not on the pace today, though had his own engine issues throughout practice and the weekend. Joe Vanazzi see another great qualifying it's a theme I've been getting used to at the end of the season 14th for the Italian driver Lando Norris failed to get a representative lap P15 for the Brit Kevin Magnussen 16th failed just to get through to Q2 Latifi for the first time in his Formula 1 career out qualifying his teammate however Jack Aitken a very very strong session today only one tenth behind his teammate and actually made a mistake on his final lap I think Aitken will be kicking himself he was not in front of his teammate. Raikkonen in 19th and rounding up your grid for today's qualifying, Pietro Fittipaldi in P20. And as we move over to our qualifying rundown, I think I'm going to start at the back and work our way forward, starting off with the two debutants, Fittipaldi and Aitken. Both of them had a mammoth task heading into this weekend, whereas George Russell had had a chance to use Formula 1 machinery in 2020. These guys almost going in blind. Aitken did do an FP1 session all the way back at the second race of the season at the Styrian Grand Prix. Fittipaldi has done a couple of runs in Formula 1 machinery before, but certainly not these 2020 beasts. Fittipaldi, eight tenths of getting through into Q2, eight tenths off his teammate Kevin Magnussen but I think that's an okay performance it's where we expected him to be and actually being within a second of getting into Q2 I think is quite respectable from Pietro he's already going to start at the back of the grid anyway tomorrow so there was no need to really push that car to the max with all the new components that will be going into the car over the course of today and into tomorrow so not a bad job from Fittipaldi Magnussen a great job to get into 16 that's exactly what he needed to do yes he was would have loved to get through to Q3 and just being 85 thousandths of Alex Albon's time in Q1 I think is a very respectable job it's not where we want to see K-Mag in what could be very well could be his penultimate race in Formula 1 but not a bad job today a much better job from Williams Latifi will be very happy he's in front of Aitken but as I just mentioned in our rundown I think Aitken 
probably should have beaten Nicholas consistently throughout the session through all of the runs they were able to do in Q1. Aitken was about half a tenth in front of Nicholas Latifi, but when it mattered, when the pressure was on, that little bit more of experience for Latifi coming in hand, a solid lap from Latifi, Perfect in the sense of what you can call perfect in that Williams car. Aiken made a huge mistake running really wide into the final corner. A tenth off Latifi, I think it's a really good job from Jack Aiken, who's been struggling already in 2020 in F2. That's exactly what he needed. And I think actually that Williams car is looking good for the race tomorrow. A driver who didn't have a great qualifying today, Kimi Raikkonen. 19th place, three tenths off getting through to Q2. I think just never was as really able to put that perfect lap together, was able to try and do something a little bit different, came out before most people in Q1, then we thought maybe we'd be able to do one final lap and possibly beat Alex Albon. It didn't come to fruition, a messy sector one. He ended up backing off, coming into the pits. It was a gamble from Alfa Romeo. It didn't pay off for that car, but their other car, Antonio Giovinazzi, is really coming into his own in the latter half of 2020. 14th today through to Q2 in front of that traditional backpack, but also in front of Lando Norris. And while we're on the subject of Norris, we might as well talk about McLaren. 15th for Lando today. Carlos Sainz, a better job in P8. Lando, never. A little bit like Kimi in Q2, is just never really able to get that lap together. Constantly caught up in traffic. And on that final run, we thought he was going to go for it straight away. Backed off because he was down in sector one. It didn't seem on the data we were able to see on the live broadcast. It seemed he was up, but from Andreas Seidel's point of view, he was down. Backed off, went for one final lap. The exact same thing happened and has come away with a 15th place. It's not the end of the world. Carlos Sainz started 15th last weekend ended up P5, so don't rule Lando out just yet, he's got a better car than Vettel, a better car than Antonio Giovinazzi in front of him, but Albon starting 12, Ocon and the likes of Stroll, Gasly inside that top 10, may be a little bit harder to work our way around, but as I always say, these guys starting in 11th all the way down to 15th, having the option for an alternate strategy really is going to play into their hands, especially tomorrow when track position is going to be king in the Grand Prix. A couple of places in front of Norris is Sebastian Vettel. It's what we used to with Seb in 2020. And in all fairness, it's pretty much what that Ferrari car is being able to produce over the course of this year. Is it better than the Mercedes? No. Is it better than the Red Bull? No. That midfield, I would argue the Renault, the Alfa Tauri and the McLaren are all better than that Ferrari. So 13th isn't the end of the world for Sebastian but as we have also seen in 2020, is Charles Leclerc pushing that car to the limit. And that's exactly what he was able to do. Fourth place, a mega job from the Monegas driver. Where did that come from? Was so confident it was the perfect lap. He didn't even decide to do a run at the end of the session. Vettel, though, I don't want to be too harsh on because he did have engine issues earlier on in the day. The team deciding to not keep him out there for the remainder of Q2, and there seem to be more issues around that garage. So Seb, I think actually it's not a terrible result in today's session. Alex Albon, we'll talk about in a moment's time because I want to move on to Red Bull a little bit later on for when we're more talking about Mercedes. But Ocon in 11th, Ricardo in 7th. It's one of those things where Renault will be content with that. They'll be very happy that they've got two drivers on alternate strategies. They're going to be able to push the likes of the Alpha Tauris, of the McLaren of Sainz, maybe even the two racing point cars. Cause those guys a little bit of a headache. And if Ricardo can be late on the brakes into turn one, he could be able to pick up a couple of positions. I think that Renault is better than the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc. A podium could be on the cards if there's some troubles earlier or maybe further up the grid. However, I think Renault do believe they had the pace to be where Leclerc was. Fourth and fifth probably would have been their target today. So seventh and eleventh, uh, it's, it's not brilliant. But it's okay. I think they will take it, all things considered. Racing point. At one stage after Q1, it was looking like they could be in the mix for pole position. Of course, that was very much short-lived with Mercedes coming back out, showing them who's boss. As the session got later and later on, Max Verstappen showing, yeah, Red Bull, that car was able to challenge for pole position today. Leclerc's lap aside, 
I think Racing Point will be very happy with Sergio Perez right up there in the mix. Four tenths off pole position. Lance Stroll a little bit further off. Of course, he's got a pole position himself in 2020. The only other driver apart from the Mercedes boys of Bottas and Hamilton to be on pole position this year. So Stroll, four tenths off his teammate. He'll be frustrated. But I think like Norris and like Raikkonen, in Q3, it was Stroll that never really got that lap together. Hence why he was quite a chunk off the rest of the field in that final session. Alpha Tauri, a team that in practice I had a really good feeling about. And I thought they could spring a real surprise in quali. Also in the race, and they still can do that. Sixth and ninth is a really good job. The third time in four races, both cars threw into Q3. This team seems to be really on the up and up at the moment. And I've got good feelings, not just about the end of this season, but I think next year, they're really going to be able to challenge these guys in that battle for fourth and best of the rest. Danny Kavia, he'd love to have a good couple of results to potentially end his Formula One career. It's not been a great season for him. Gasly has clearly been the one to beat, but a two-tenth gap, that's a really strong job from Danny. Is it too little, too late? I think so. And Yuki Tsunoda had a fantastic drive, a fantastic win again in Formula 2 today. Helmet marker on the podium, that all seems wrapped up. But Danny Kvyat, fair play to him because that was a stonker of a lap at the end of Q3. Gasly, ninth again into Q3. So Alpha Tauri can be very, very happy with today's performance. I suppose up next, we've got to talk about Red Bull. Max Verstappen, faultless. So, so close to pole position. And actually, with 56 thousandths between himself and pole, knowing Max, he'll probably be kicking himself that he wasn't able to just find that little bit more time. But he will know, going into the race tomorrow, there is opportunities for a victory in the race. I hate doing this, but we've got to talk about it. Alex Albon, 12th, out in Q2, with a car capable of getting pole position, Ah, oh, it's a difficult one. It really, really is. And once again, Red Bull, who are trying desperately to find reasons to keep Alex in the car, he hasn't helped himself today. Sergio Perez, again, up near the front of the field, massively out-qualifying Lance Stroll, but only four tenths behind Max Verstappen. Red Bull have got a lot of thinking to do. Albon tomorrow does have the opportunity to shine. We know he's fantastic at overtaking. We know he's pretty nifty at looking after those tyres. And of course, he's got a car capable of pole and a car capable of winning the Grand Prix tomorrow. So I'm not going to rule him out completely because we have seen several times over the course of this year and the latter stages of last season, Albon can make it work. He's really got to prove himself tomorrow though. He's got the tools. I think he's got the skills as well. He's just got to put it all together, which we haven't always seen over the course of this year. So I'm very much looking forward to Albon's progress tomorrow. And finally, Mercedes, the team that everyone's eyes were on this weekend. And perhaps the team that despite wrapping up both drivers and constructors title were under the most pressure this weekend. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. But with George Russell stepping in at the last minute. An opportunity, a golden opportunity to prove to Mercedes to put him in that car in 2022. And also Valtteri Bottas to prove that, yeah, he is as good as people don't always make out. He is a driver capable of taking the fight to Lewis Hamilton and is worthy of that Mercedes drive. Put that all together and you've got a recipe for disaster, you would think, in that Mercedes team. Both drivers were fantastic today. Both of them with very, very minor mistakes. I think Anthony Davidson ran through both of them and their laps comparatively. Two hundredths, 26 thousandths between the pair. That is basically the exact same lap time. When you think how much a tenth of a second is, half that, half that again is how close their lap times were. We're talking about absolutely nothing between the two of them. And to be fair, nothing between Max Verstappen as well proves what an incredible fight we have on our hands tomorrow. Bottas did what he needed to do. Prove himself he can beat the boy that has just jumped into this car. But George Russell has done exactly what he needed to do. He'll be gutted. Well, he probably won't. He'll be somewhat frustrated, shall we say, that he's lost this record of 
in every Grand Prix out qualifying his teammate, but to be that close to Valtteri Bottas after being parachuted in at the last minute in a car which in all reality he's too big for, even his boots are a size too small. All of those little discomforts, surely that would have made up the 26 thousandths of a second. George Russell, I think today, even by not securing that pole position, has proved he's a driver that is worthy of that Mercedes seat. And once again, I am so, so looking forward to the race tomorrow. Before we go then, driver of the day and ones to watch. Plenty of contenders for driver of the day. All of the rookies, Aitken, Fittipaldi, and even George Russell deserve a shout. Antonio Giovinazzi, I think, did a fantastic job today. Danny Kvyat also, but I'm giving it to Charles Leclerc. Fourth place, a magical lap. That car should be nowhere near fourth place. I said it earlier, no hard feelings on Seb. He had his own issues today, but Charles continues to get the max out of that terrible Ferrari on a circuit, which in all reality is very much a power-based circuit. We know that Ferrari engine isn't great in 2020 so to put it on fourth place an incredible job from Charles Leclerc but plenty of options I'd love to know your driver of the day in the comments below and ones to watch tomorrow just like driver of the day there is so many to choose from but I'm certainly picking two of those boys at the front Verstappen from third will know there's a chance of a victory tomorrow something that hasn't happened too often in 2020 Likewise with George Russell, a podium would be a dream. A race win would be just that little bit more special. Alex Albon from 12, he's got a career to prove himself that he deserves. I think he can rise to the challenge, certainly wants to watch. But my F1E wants to watch is Lando Norris, 15th. He'll be working his way through the pack. He wants to beat Sainz. He wants to be as high up as he can in the driver's standings. Alternate strategy, I'm expecting good things from Norris tomorrow. And that's it from me here in Bahrain for the Sakir Grand Prix qualifying review. I'll be back late tomorrow evening. It's a five o'clock Grand Prix in Sakir. I very much hope you all enjoy. I very much expect one of the best races of the season. So fingers crossed the boys don't let us down. Thank you all very much for watching. If you are new, feel free to subscribe. Enjoy the race tomorrow and I hope to see you all in the next one.